You draw two cards from a standard deck of 52 cards. What is the probability that they are both kings? Let's first make sure we understand what's happening in this problem. And that is, we are drawing two cards from the deck. And we're not replacing that first card. We pull one card out of the deck and we don't put it back in the in the deck and then there are just 51 cards left from which we draw the second card and what is the probability that both of those are kings so when we're talking about successive trials so more than one trial then we want to use this rule of multiplication and when we have more than one trial we're saying what is the probability that we get a event a on the first trial and event b on the second trial. And that's what we're asking here with the kings. Well, that general uh, formula is the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B given that A did happen, that we did get A. So I'll write a little note real quick on this notation. This is the probability that we get B given that so we are assuming, in this second part, we're assuming that A did happen. Given that A did happen, whatever event A happens to be. In our case, event A is getting a king. So let's write that out. We have the probability that the first card is a king. Well, we have four kings out of... 52 cards. So the probability is 4 in 52. And we can make that into a decimal right away. I'm not going to do that just yet because I'm going to uh, end up multiplying this. The second one, this, this part here, we have what is the probability that the second card is a king given that the first one was a king. So we're assuming that the first one was a king. So we only have three kings left. If the first card was a king, we only have three kings left, and we only have 51 total cards left in the deck because we didn't put it back. So when we multiply these two, just as this formula suggests or tells us to do, we have 4 over 52 multiplied by 3 over 51 and it turns out to be actually a pretty low probability that you get two kings in a row. It's actually about 0 .0045 and that's rounded of course at four decimal places. You could bring that out to more decimal places if you wanted. So that's the probability of getting two kings in a row from a standard deck. In our second example you flip two coins, what is the probability that they both come up heads? So what's going on here is the first coin is flipped and we want, want it to come up heads and the second coin is flipped and it comes up heads. So with this one, these are called independent events because the first flip does not affect the probability of the second flip. There is no physical change on the other coin or even if you flipped the same coin twice there is no physical change. Just like the deck of cards there was a physical change. We took out a king and we had fewer cards left in the deck. So the probability that the first is heads we could almost do this in our heads but haha but we'll write it down and that's one and two. A f assuming it's a fair coin. The probability that it's a that the second comes up heads given that the first was heads also equals 1 and 2 because there's there's absolutely nothing about the first uh, flip that changes the probability of the second. And the reason I've, I'm getting so emphatic in my voice is because oftentimes you hear people saying oh heads or tails are due it's due to come it's absolutely incorrect. Uh, nothing changes here. You could get heads, uh, assuming the coin is fair, you could get co uh, heads 100 times in a row, and the next flip, you would still have a chance of one and two of the next flip being heads. But the different question of asking, what is the probability that they both come up heads, 
is what we have here. That is where we multiply. One half times one half, and that's one fourth or 0.25 is the probability that both coins come up heads. So there's a nice uh, couple of applications of the rule of multiplication.